Okay, here's the last video probably for the day. This is for Joseph again in Maryland. This is just your walker too. I'm just going to show you everything that comes with it and how it's working on the test bench here. Um, I did make another video with the walker too. And I believe the power output cut off on that. One of the other YouTube watchers, he commented just the other day about that. So we'll cover that too, the power output of this thing. But these are very nice uh, 40 channel CB radios. There's nothing really bad to say about them. Um, they have a nice uh, feature here where you can charge your cell phone, smartphone, whatever you want to call it. So, that, I mean, that's great. Because, you know, you, you're using your power plug, cigarette layer plug, what I used to call it when I was younger. You could be using that for other stuff, power and other stuff, and you run out of uh, areas to power stuff. Well, now you got one in your CB, so I'll just get it uh, unboxed. We'll hook it up and check it out. President, they always give you a nice book. It's very informative. It tells you about all of the uh, menu functions, how to work, everything. It comes in a bunch of different languages, too, but they are a worldwide company. They sell in many different... Uh, formats of radios in different countries so they have to have multi uh, language manuals which is great I mean they they market throughout the world so let me get this thing out we'll get it hooked up over here you have your stock microphone power cord all that good stuff is all brand new no, nothing's been removed out of the packaging um, where are those little pieces I wanted to show you one thing just one second and I'll find them. Okay, we're looking for these little things right here. They say 3M. They have the adhesive on the back. You pull that off. You would stick those to your mounting bracket, not to the side of the radio. And what that'll do is when you, if you do take this in and out of your vehicle or if you have it mounted on a, a, a desk in a base station setup, It'll allow the radio not to get scratched on its side because, you know, older radios, of course, we didn't do stuff like that. A lot of the covers have scratches, so this will allow you to, you know, do it and you won't scratch the radio. Then you guys get a nice big sticker with these President radios. You don't get stickers with the other radios. Okay, Joseph, this is your Walker 2. Uh, we got it hooked up to the transmit testing right now. So I have my uh, microphone, you have one coming as well. So it's really simple, you just unscrew the back, the little nut off of here, pull the back off, put your 9 volt in, put this back on, screw it down, it's good to go. It's wired direct for these radios, so you don't have to worry about that, rewiring it or anything. Um, I did mention in the video about the amplifiers that, uh, here's your mic type, you have EL, that's what this is, it is a electret condenser I believe is how you pronounce that I hear people call it all different things electric electret I think is what it's actually called so and then if you want to use something else dynamic is right there D it looks like D4 but it's DY so but we'll leave it in electret right now and that's what your stock microphone is also so it's real simple radio you got your mic gain out over here RF power and I'll show you what the range you get on RF power. So with it all the way up, you're looking at uh, 4 watts. And then if we turn it down, you're looking at about a watt and a half, a little less. So this will actually drive the KL203P just a little harder. It's not going to make a big difference or anything like that. So it's nothing to worry about. It's definitely under 2 watts, so not a big deal whatsoever there. So let's turn it back up to 4 watts and just look at the output power. Turn our mic about halfway up is good. And we got 25 over there and the peak setting is on. So hello, 1, 2, what? No, the peak setting is not on. Okay, now it is. Hello, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, check, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, nice clean audio, nice clean audio out of this thing, about 15 watts or so, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a big powerhouse, but it's not supposed to be, it's a regular CB radio, but it's doing, 
doing a fine job. It's going to sound nice and clear and, and uh, crisp over the air. You're not going to you're not going to sound all over modulated or anything like that. So you know, you can try to listen to it a little bit more. But I'll probably squeal like I always do. One two one two check check one two three four five one two hello one two. Here's our spectrum analyzer right here. We're looking at. Uh, one channel each direction is basically where we're at here and we can adjust our microphone so we can talk here is our talking one two three four five check 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 hello radio one two hello one two so we're not bleeding or splattering into adjacent channels or nothing like that it's real clean I'll show you the waveform really quick on the scope Okay, this radio does have a timeout timer, so I'm gonna have to try to be a little quick. They do tell you in the service manual for this radio to use a 1.25 kilohertz tone, so that's what we have, 30 microvolt. We're not modulating it right now, we're just keyed up, so we'll look at our spectrum first with one channel each way. That's modulated right there, you can see it's nice and good. Here's our two division up here. There we go. So you don't get a full 100% out of these, but you get pretty darn close. So it's very clean, clear. You can see here on the uh, power meters, we're not modulated. There's our carrier, 4 watts. We modulate it, it goes forward. And then our peak power is right there at about almost 16, maybe, maybe a touch over. It's really hard to tell, but close enough between 15 and 17 would be that slash mark in the middle so they do really well they sound good and uh, what the only thing left to check would be the frequency on transmit now these radios are not adjustable as far as that goes so you better make a radio that's on frequency if you're not going to have it adjustable so um let me get that set up here bear with me One second. Okay, well, a little technical difficulty here. The trigger on my free counter is not picking up the signal very well, so what I would normally do is if I was working on the radio, I would probe it with the uh, oscilloscope probe, or I have an external, I can plug something into the back of the CB and it has an external B and C out, and I could connect the cable directly off of that. The reason it's not uh, feeding properly is because we're going through other pieces of test equipment. But So what we do is we'll, we'll test it on the spectrum analyzer. That's also being uh, fed with our external reference. So same reference this uh, free counter is being fed with. So what we have here is uh, center frequency is channel 20. And that's where we have this. So and we have a span set to, what do we have, 100 hertz. Yeah, 100 hertz. So basically, it's uh, 27205.050 on this side of the screen, and then 27.204950 on that side of the screen. That's some. That's our signal right there. And if we hit the marker, we are at 27.204978. So that's pretty darn close. And like I say, when you make a radio that's not adjustable, you better make it on frequency. And I feel like they did a really good job of that. So you got nothing to worry about there. I guess we could have also uh, zoomed in on our IC7300 here on the spectrum analyzing scope and, and looked there. But I've been listening to some 17 meter today. It's been a little bit of activity, so that's why I didn't do that. The only thing left now is to test out the receiver, so let's do that. I guess I can show you a dynamic mic. I might as well do that too while I have the adapter. So let me grab something. I'll be right back. Alrighty, so we have a dynamic mic on here now. Uh, my buddy Matt out in Idaho, he'll remember this mic. I know he's watched one of my other videos and he said he commented about, yeah, I remember that. That looks familiar. So here's dynamic. This would be uh, Electret. So we'll just show you what happens when you use a dynamic mic in Electret. It still works, it just doesn't work very well. 
So we're talking into it and uh, you know it just doesn't sound it doesn't sound very good you know it's kind of low so that that's why it's not so if you go to dynamic push the menu button in dynamic and hold it you can just key the mic it'll get you out of the menu so now 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 we're talking it, it's it's a little louder it's more uh, pronounced because it's dynamic so I have the RF gain back way down on that, so we're trying not to squeal. So mic gain on this was about 50%. So that's that. I'm going to put it back in Electret. So I'm assuming you're going to run your capo mic with it or your factory mic, either one. Now let's check the receive. I'll be right back with that. All right, so we're back. We have the uh, RF signal generator feeding in we got a negative 73 30 percent modulation i got a, a synad meter hooked up it's not on right now but that's why we're not hearing a tone through the um speaker of the radio so they set these at negative 67 you can see your s meter there it's it's just about i'd say it's like an eight and a half or something but that's usually they're set from the factory at negative 67 I'm not there we go so negative 67 right there so that's where they set them it's not adjustable it's not really a big deal it's still going to be very accurate as far as when somebody's close to you they're going to slowly as you get closer start creeping up into the red and you know so it's going to be accurate you know if somebody's not going to be 20 miles away giving you 15 db over nine i mean and it's just not really it's not how it's supposed to be. I know when the skip conditions are coming, you get some crazy stuff. But in, in reality, an S meter, is, if it's properly set up, it shouldn't. You shouldn't have someone in the next town giving you signals in the red. I mean, at least not the way I see it. But, you know, everybody has their own beliefs on that, too. I used to tell people in my younger days, you know, you want to calibrate your S meter. And what I used to do before I knew how to do all this stuff, had test equipment, I would go out in the driveway, key up my, my mobile radio, put on like a, a tape, cassette tape, with uh, a song or whatever, run upstairs to the base station, go in and, uh, well, I'd tape or rubber band the microphone shut, the PTT closed so it's transmitting, and kind of set it up by one of, like, one of the door speakers of the car, run upstairs and adjust it for full deflection and that's how I used to do it because I wanted to know like if someone was getting close to my house or whatever so that's kind of how I did it I don't know how that would play out today I have the signal generator I just do it kind of the way I guess that you're supposed to but I guess in a pinch you could still probably do that so let's turn on the synad meter here and I'll get that set up and we'll take a look at it okay so we're still at negative 67 now i can hear the tone because we're of course we're coming through the meter it's got a speaker built into it i can adjust it it's kind of scratchy because the potentiometer is probably a little dirty but but i'm gonna i'm gonna turn that off because i'm sure we don't really want to hear that i'll turn it back up when we get down more to a lower sensitivity level so I we'll want to see that needle move up to the 12, uh, 12 dB mark. So we went past it some, which a little overzealous there. So we'll come down to like, that's too much. You're getting there now. It's about where it should be. It's very, very good on these CB radios. And that's what I try to stress with a lot of these 10 meter radios and stuff. You you don't get the sensitivity like you do on a regular CB radio. It's just due to the fact that you got more frequency coverage, I think. A lot of it has to do with that. But again, the receive isn't adjustable on these radios. So what you get is what you get. But 
We were coming in at a negative 113.5 at 30% AM modulation. Let's listen to it. It's still pretty uh, copyable. So right there in our 12 mark. So I guess uh, we can see how far down we can go. It's 118. You start to really get uh, cut off once you get up in the 120s. But I mean, that's really good for uh, AM only CB radio. And that's all from the manufacturer. There's nothing I can do to improve that. I wouldn't uh, say that I could, even if I could, because I, I literally can't do anything to the radio. So it's a uh, service mount. There's no adjustments internally. There's no reason to ever open it up unless you had the, you know, the skills if something were to fail in it. After the two-year warranty is up, someone could repair it. Then they would, of course, repair a component of something that failed. The cap went out or something like that. If this thing lasts 20 years, and say in 20 years one of the caps dries up or something and needs to get replaced, well, then by all means, yeah, pop the cover replace the part that needs to be replaced but other than that they, they don't require any service or anything it's pretty uh standard hook it up to an antenna that has a good standing wave match and and you're pretty much good to go so you got weather bands you can change the memory channels i've showed all this in the other video i did cover the power output that i mentioned in the beginning that it, uh Another video I had of these didn't, I guess the video cut off. I used to have a problem with a different camera I had. If I would hold it a certain way, it would, there was a button and it would stop the recording. So I pretty much covered it all. Um, Joseph, one thing I'll mention when you get this, go to the President Electronics USA website, create an account, and then there'll be an option on there for you to register this radio for warranty. I would encourage you to do that as soon as you possibly can because I believe that is one of their um, stipulations is if you don't register it within a certain amount of time, I no, I'm not sure, but I've heard this, that they will uh, say that the warranty is won't go into effect. So I just encourage everyone that I sell a President Radio to, like as soon as you get it, the day of or the next day before it travels out of your mind just go on the website create an account and just simply register the product they'll ask you for like the serial number who you bought it from you know the dates that you bought it and whatnot and then once you do that you're covered for the first two years uh, radios like this i would assume if you had a problem they'd probably just replace it for you there's not really much that could go wrong they're like i say it's a surface mount radio it's built very very well this thing could take a beating. I mean, it's built like a tank. And uh, I really don't foresee these radios ever having any trouble. The only trouble they could possibly have, I guess, is if user error. If you hooked it up backwards or if you started talking on it into a shorted antenna. Or forgot to put an antenna on the back or something like that. Well, of course, nothing's going to... You know, the stuff... Nowadays, these radios, especially with these MOSFETs in there, they're not going to handle... Uh, a shorted load for very long it's going to uh, give out especially on a sideband rig so that's it for this one guys this is the walker 2 by president i like these a lot i think they're a great little cb radio they got great receive good clear sound and transmit they got pretty much every feature you could want in a cb other than sideband i know people wish they had sideband but they don't have it and I would assume sometime in 2022 they'll probably have these with FM. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.